Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Two Comma Coffee Club. I am Valerie, and with me today are my co-hosts, as always, Lene and Michelle. And our guest today is Angela Teresa Egypt. We're very happy to have her. She is going to also be a presenter at the Neville Summit coming up in June. And uh, Angela is a a uh, teacher and coach in the in manifesting in the tradition of Neville Goddard. And to add into the mix, she is also a psychic medium. And we're going to be talking uh, a bit about how the medium, her medium abilities uh, connect with her manifesting um, experience and ways that she works with her clients, bringing those two uh, types of teaching and, and energy together. So welcome, Angela. Glad to have you today. And uh, hi. And um, uh, I know this is also an area that's particularly interesting to Michelle, because Michelle's own experience kind of has merged into those areas. So you may want to be asking some of the key questions today, Michelle. But um, we just want to talk a little bit, um, just to start off so people are familiar, how did you find your way to Neville? I know you're uh, close to 2020, uh, our mentor, so you've probably worked with him or experienced some of his programs. So why don't you talk a little bit about that and also about, you know, when the, the medium abilities uh, as a medium came into your life. So. Yeah. If you want to go in order, the psychic medium happened really young. Teen, sure. Uh, it, before, it usually does. It usually yeah, does. As a child, show yeah, as a child. I used to scare. I used to scare people because I used to know when they were going to die, <laughs> and I was scared that I knew that. But uh, apparently, luckily, we went to a kind of progressive church when I was a little uh, pro Protestant congregationalist, and one of the ladies said that I had I had the gift to see auras. So that's what, it, and I was seeing the aura. And sometimes when people's when people are about to pass, I guess their auras either move away from their body or they turn really, really dark, but not in a bad way, just meaning that they're separating from their earthly life, which is an interest, and it's still true. I think Neville actually knew about some of this stuff because he was an astrologist. And uh, I think he probably ran into a lot of people who understood that. And some of the, I've been listening to a lot of his stuff and there's some things that he experienced or saw that were very interesting that kind of tie in, which I'll get into at some point. As for the 2020, how I found him, well, you know, I've been obviously in the psychic medium spiritual business for years and years. Uh, I did, I consider myself, I think I heard it on 2020 or somewhere, uh, what do you call it, a recovered Christian recovered Catholic, uh, which yes, I love that term. Me too. Yeah, because I'm not <laughs> any, I'm not any certain religion anymore. To. Yeah, I I've been recovered from all of it, you know. Yeah. And I and but because there's one thing I have to say about my Roman Catholic Irish Southern mother who did a went through a lot of religions herself, all Christian, uh, that she did always tell me to study everything. So I did. And I, yeah. I hung out with the Jewish kids a couple summers. I went to the Jewish uh, community center and did theater with them. I'm also an actor <laughs> and a singer. So I hung out with the Jewish kids, learned all about that, which I actually related more to the Jews than I did to the Christian upbringing. But that was a, that was cool because they have some really good ideas and they're all about education. And then a few about four years ago, five years ago, uh, a friend of mine who was a client, a psychic medium client on a regular basis, she said, you got to check out this person 2020 because I've done the, you know, the law of attraction with Esther Hicks. And uh, I, I read the secret after I, I actually caught Esther Hicks law of attraction for a long time. Yeah. I went through that for about almost 10 years. So I read all their books and study that then the secret kind of came out after that which i consider I, I i'm not putting down other people but it's very remedial mm -hmm. and if you know uh if you've studied law of attraction deeply you know that secret is very basic and that's why people don't always yeah. it doesn't always work for them because it's it's, kindergarten. Kindergarten. Yeah, it's beginning but then yeah. if you know the other secret which is not really a secret hi <laughs> uh, the other secret <laughs> is that um rhonda burns studied with abraham hicks she and all she did was she went on a cruise with them and then she took the basics because she wanted to make money which is all her law of attraction it's fine so she said i'll start with the basics so i can write a lot of books and there you go there's her success yeah so she actually is taking their stuff and just making it basic which which i think is a great idea 
That's what I do with my classes. I, when I started, I thought I taught psychic medium development first many years ago. And then, you know, you build your courses like 20 does. <laughs> but my friend who was a psychic medium uh, client, let me get back to the subject. <laughs> I can talk a lot, is that she said, you got to check out this guy 2020 because we were both into, we went to Abraham Hicks together to meetings here in New York. Right. And so she said, read it. He calls himself 2020. He was, uh, she told me he, he went through a prison thing where he, you know, was beat up and he had a different name then. Uh, yeah. And I did find out. He was out a guard. That, he was a prison guard. He was, he a, was prison a prison guard. guard and, I, and he had I just started out, the job. And I know yeah. his real name, but I forgot it. But he's 2020. He legally changed it. So that's fine. Yeah. So I know him as 20. And then when I got to watching him and got very much into it and studying his, you know, the Neville Goddard stuff. But, and I studied Dr. Wayne uh, Dyer, who was very, did study that. So I, got, I had a lot of that when I started here in 2020. I go, well, I know this stuff. But I didn't know Neville until I started listening. And it makes so much more sense. It makes sense to yeah. religious upbringing. It makes sense to my uh, understanding. Because I used to question all the time. I'm six years old in church going, no, no, that's not right. You're, I told the minister, you're doing it wrong. Do you, <laughs> yeah. you know? And then they'd go, quit asking questions. You're supposed to have faith. I go, but you're telling me <laughs> that something wrong. You don't understand. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> so that that's how that kind of went through my life my poor mother uh, she <laughs> and then I did the medium stuff and then you know some people thought it was a sin my mother thought I might be following the devil and then somebody did straighten her out on that so, yeah mother, I used to be told it was the devil's work absolutely and my mother by the way is very psychic she just called it intuition she wouldn't call it anything but but I go wow. you're psychic too where do you think I got it from she she told me stories that my grandpa used to read the stars her father I go don't you think that's a little bit <laughs> the same thing? He could read the stars in the sky and not astrology. He, he, he sat with her one day and said, the president's going to die in the White House in six weeks and he'll die suddenly. And the president died six weeks later in the White House. I wish I knew my grandpa long enough to learn that, <laughs> but wow, yeah, it all comes out in you this way. This is where you've learned it. Exactly. It, it, and it, it, it's out. his legacy. It's yeah. his legacy and it's internalized through you. So it's not learned though, is it? It's go. not no, learned. It's not learned. It's just something that, you know, you're right. Exactly. It's, it's it's something yeah. you're born with because my mother was born with intuition. She certainly didn't study psychic mediumship. She just did. Right. Well, you know, there is a belief that we all have these qualities I, and it's going to come out and, and manifest differently yeah. to the extent that we can handle it or how we, how or we as approach we it. as we learn other things that lead us to yeah. understand it, which exactly. is what I did. And That's right. Neville helped me understand what I'm doing. And a lot of what I was doing is exactly what he teaches. I go, that's what it was. I understood uh, subconsciously, I guess, or consciously, because it's all consciousness. But I understood what the Bible meant more than the ministers, <laughs> the, the people and the priests when we did Catholic stuff. I did that very young, though. And I'm four years old telling Catholic priests what they're doing wrong. So that was fun. <laughs> they go, my Love mother that. goes, yeah, called me, uh, well, I was called a lot of things, I'm sure. Strange <laughs> was the number one. You understand that, Michelle, being called strange or weird. I was oh, the weird kid. I was I, the black sheep. Me too. Weird kid. I'm an only <laughs> child, so I didn't have that issue. I mean, I was raised with a cousin, but at school, yeah. I was the weird kid. Because I told people things, and then they go, then they called me a witch because things would happen. Yeah, I'm not. I told them. <laughs> people still call me a witch. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I've been called that a few times. I, I still call yeah. myself a witch. Me yeah, too. I I call, yes, I'm, I'm just like, yes, I, actually, I, I like witches. it. I know people who really are witches, you know, and that's cool. Yeah. And I have people call me a witch, so I'm not offended by it. Right. But I said, you do misunderstand. I, I do have friends who are witches, but I'm not. I did read about witchcraft, though. <laughs> I almost made my mother crash a car when I was eight. I go, you know, because I was just learning about what my gifts were. And I had, <laughs> and I was well read. I was reading by the age of two. So I could read full books. I was, by the time I went to first grade, I didn't go to kindergarten. I was reading at a third grade level. So my mother had to stimulate me. And thank God she's educated. She would get me books that were a little, you know, higher learning. When I was, you know, third grade, I'm reading books that are, you know, high school or beyond. So I was very curious. And um, I, I guess when I was about eight, I found a book at a, at the sh shopping centers. They used to have the books, you know, they still do a little bit, but when they had more printed books, there was a book on white magic, 
which was, I guess, a witchcraft book. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to buy it. My mother refused to buy it because it was sinful, whatever. And I kept saying, oh, I got to learn more about this white magic and doing that. And I were driving in the car, I guess, when we were leaving, I was arguing with her, which I did, uh, because I was eight, but I acted like a 40 year old. Uh, And I didn't understand why I couldn't read a book. It's just a book. And she said, I go, I think when I'm in college, I'm going to study witchcraft. My mother <laughs> breaks so fast. I think the car spun. Ah! <laughs> like, and she goes, if you ever say that again, I will, I will take you to the nearest nunnery, I think. I think oh she to, because she thought that was just the worst thing you could ever. She's from the South, I guess. So, you know, she thought that was the worst thing you could ever do is say witchcraft because it was all immediately evil. And I go, I, I said, white magic, didn't I? Isn't that good? <laughs> and not black was, magic. Hello. I didn't say black magic, <laughs> but I guess witchcraft denotes black magic in right. her world. And then, yeah. you know, this I, is I, all classed as witchcraft. Yes, it is. It's all. Even Neville, I'm sure, has it's, his yeah. detractors. Yeah. Neville has some interesting stuff on. So his psychic stuff is very interesting because I, I was listening to a lot of lectures um, and reading a lot of his books. And he has this belief about the reincarnation, which we he believes in uh he says something about i don't know where this is and i want to find out more about it but something about you reincarnate at 21 years old or 20 years old yeah uh, 23 i think it was something like that but you're not a baby and i said you know i think he might because of all the studies i've done he might be talking about walk-ins anybody know about the walk-ins yes Yes. so i I wonder if if that's what he knows yeah yeah Yeah. i don't know maybe we need to explain it to who's listening yeah 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 Yeah. a walk-in is somebody like you're you're you and then you have a near-death experience or a death experience and when you come back uh (laughs) play with my hair oh when you come back you are a different person you've had your soul walk out and a new one came in that's mm. the basic the the basic of a walk-in and, and you need a body you have to you yeah need you a need body. a body and so the person that you were the soul went to the other side as he will explain a little bit he talks about that and then a person who wanted to continue on the earth or was will step into the body so that's you know now that depends on the age you are when it happens but who knows it could happen at 23 i didn't you know, I haven't looked into that as I was. So you would be two different people. Yes. Sharing the, you, the, the, the body, body on well, earth. One body left. The soul you were, who you were, you may still have a name associated with who you were. You won't retain all their memories because the other yeah. one went to the other side and has gone, has left. So all you have is cell memory, maybe in the brains. They're saying cell memory, but not soul memory. So your new soul comes in and you have the memories of that person. And you may not even go back to birth. It might just, you are a kind of a new person. Like it could be somebody, you know, in another country who stepped in because they've had people who suddenly have accents that didn't have them before. So it could be a foreign person. Like I, you know, Michelle, and not that, but if you stepped into me and I left, Angela left and went to the other side and Michelle passed away for whatever reason, and you stepped into me, I would speak like you and not like me anymore because you have an accent different than mine Mm -hmm. and you're from another country. And that's the basic of walk-ins. I don't know with Neville, but that's what it sounds like to me. I mean, that that sounds, yeah, like that actually makes more sense to me now because for a while I was wanting to really understand what he was getting at. Yeah, me too, because I say, well, Where did he talk about this so that the viewers at home can can, can research, do you know? It's in a few of the talks. It's a few of the talks. It's the lectures, okay. but I don't know which one anymore because okay. I've listened to so many. It might be, okay. you know, you are, uh, there's so many. I, I couldn't, I have to, I'm going to start keeping track because I want to know where I heard yeah. it. Because <laughs> that's where I also learned where a lot of people get, uh, the people who come onto our 2020 site and ask us questions. I also found out where they're getting misinformation uh, about the special, uh, special person, which uh, they miss- yes. And there's that, lots of that misunderstanding yes, a lot of misunderstanding and they're like he's got a special person he did it he had a certain person in mind he was dating her <laughs> and he was for all intents and purposes at the time he was single he was still married by paper but he hadn't been with his wife for four or five years i listened to all of them they hadn't been together they hadn't even seen each other it right. was a uh they she just wouldn't sign the divorce papers 
because she was holding on for whatever reason. And he didn't know the, all the Neville stuff yet, even though he's Neville, he was learning it. So he was unable to split that situation because uh, I listened to all the lectures to find out the truth on that. When he met this woman, he had dated somebody else right before this woman, not his, his wife he hadn't seen for like four years, like whatever, or five years. I didn't get a timing, but it was a while, a long while. They weren't even involved. She was dating somebody right. else. Yeah, they weren't involved at all. So no. she wasn't really part of the picture. She, he was technically single. And he was dating another woman for a long time from his Broadway show. And they broke up because she wanted to get married. He didn't feel they were the right match. And then he met this woman at one of his lectures. She was single or just divorced or whatever, but she was attracted to him, came up to talk to him, the one he ended up marrying. And he asked her out for drinks that night and they started dating. And when he did his, for those who are looking into imagining what you want, then he imagined that night that he was, she was, he was with the person he loved. He imagined being in bed with the person he loved for life. That's what mm -hmm. he did. Not necessarily her, just the person he loved because he felt himself strongly attracted to her. And then he imagined her sleeping because he didn't know everything about her, uh, sleeping by herself, not with a husband, not with the thing in her where she was he didn't imagine her with him necessarily at that point right she did he just wanted her to be single or the person he's imagining to be single i think he put her face to it that night because he had met her and that was where he was and um then he found out i guess the next day or a few days later he doesn't say the timing but he found out you know she was single she was available to date and then i think he asked her for a date so um yeah so he does. And I'm going to do something rude because I have <laughs> I have special hair on and it's falling for me. <laughs> for those who know, but <laughs> I'm going to make it real <laughs> as I can. Uh, my hair can look like this <laughs> with this. So just to confirm, um, the lecture was called The Divine Body, Lene. Yes. Is that the one? That's, okay. I know he's mentioned other ones, but this one uh, particularly mm. says... Um, you reach the age when you die there and are restored to life in a world just like this one in bodies just like these only the body is almost new not a baby or a child new always around 20 22 23 years of age that's about the time that you pick it up yes and years ago uh, they say that people who have spir spiritual gifts like we have and I think we all have will usually have a an experience a strong experience at the age of five and the age of 11 and possibly right around the age of 23 which is in all the studies of mediumship Holy and psychic shit. stuff so he actually is talking wow. about things that are already out there that yeah. were out there for centuries centuries did you just have a realization Lene? I did because <laughs> yeah. yes yeah, I saw that. That's literally <laughs> That's so true. She wow. said, I'm going to be really quiet in this one because yeah, I'm not feeling it I today. Mean, and well, it's all going to be about her. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's really funny is now I had a near death experience and I was dead <laughs> at 15. So it can happen teenage. It doesn't have to be on those years, but it's approximately at those points in your life. 11 is your leaving childhood. You're going into teenage, right? You know, mm -hmm. five years old is when you're going from baby to you know, more the kind of middle. So, and then teenage, in my case, I was 15. So you're kind of heading into your adult world and what it's going to be. So I, I just died. Well, I got, I drowned, I drowned in the ocean and I'm a good swimmer, by the way. Aww. So I got dragged under by the, uh, by the undertow. Mm -hmm. It was, it was riptides. I was in the riptides right. by yeah. accident. But I had some weird experiences on the beach. I, I'm from Arizona and we used to go to California all the time. And I went there when I was 14 and I was on the beach alone again near the riptides. I seemed to gravitate towards those for some reason. But I was afraid of big water. I could swim. I was, my mother got me in swimming lessons because she couldn't swim at all. So she wanted me in swimming lessons as a baby because she was afraid for, because she knows if she fell in, she would drown. She was so afraid. So she made sure she didn't want me to be afraid of water or swimming. So I swam when I was a baby, I in pools, you know, because uh, it's Arizona. So everybody has a pool, hopefully, <laughs> they tried to. And um, she'd have me in these pools, and swimming lessons. So but I was afraid to swim in the ocean because it's very rough. It's a lot of waves and, you know, things like that scare me. I love to look at the ocean, though. I'm very peaceful by the ocean, but I wouldn't go much deeper than like my ankles. Yeah. I wouldn't go where it. So <laughs> a friend dragged me out longer. But one time I was at the beach and I was by myself, you know, down the shore. I wasn't by myself, but I was down the shore and it was a, a beach on its own. And 
sub and I loved uh, Lassie, the TV show. That was my first favorite TV show at like two years old. And I always wanted to be the little girl he saved. That's what I always wanted to be a movie star or a TV star. Yeah. So <laughs> I was on the beach and I was starting to kind of go into the water. It was getting a little rough. And I said, I better go away, but let me go in the water a little more. And suddenly this collie dog from nowhere, from behind down the beach, comes running down the beach and jumps and pushes me away from the beach, pushes me away, wow. jumps on me. And I'm not afraid of dogs. So I wasn't afraid of her, the dog. She was just pushing me away. She played with me for a few minutes, but she kept pushing me away from the water, especially the area I was in. She kept pushing me down the shore this way, away from the rocks. I was near rocks. That's where usually the riptides are. So she's pushing me away from the riptides. And at some point I got closer to my family and a little farther away. And then she ran away back to where she came from. And I kept saying, come back. And she played with me for like 20, 30 minutes. Love the, I don't know if it was a her, but it's Lassie, you know. And went away <laughs> and I never saw the dog again, came out of nowhere. So I manifested a dog that oh, I got to play God. with because I wanted the collie. So I got a collie for 20, 30 minutes and it was really wild. I said, that was an angel dog. I call them angel dogs. Yeah. And that angel dog pushed me away from, I guess, the care, an area where I would drown. Then about a year later, we were there again and uh, in the area and I was with uh, friends and we were, I was with adult friends, but we, they got us a private beach and I went with my best friend to that area again. And she kept saying, come deeper, Angela, because she wasn't as afraid. And she kept going, she was a little bit above me, but she went deeper and deeper. And I said, no, it's too dangerous. And it was starting to get up to my, my, almost my waist. And I said, I don't think so. And then suddenly it hit my waist. I felt something grab my foot and pull me under. And it pulled me under and I looked up because I was still kind of above water and this giant wave was above my head and I was gone. I just got spun. You know, I got caught in the curl of the wave mm. and whatever pulled my foot, dragged me under. And then I started swimming up as you try to do when you're in that situation. And I started swimming up and I just kept going deeper or deeper. And at one point I kept saying, I need gills. I was also very friendly with talking to God directly because, you know, kind of like a Neil Walsh thing. I was going, hey, God, you got to save me. So I go, even though I know I'm God, <laughs> but I was talking to myself uh, in my head. I kept saying, OK, and I'm fighting to get above the water because I'm swimming. Uh, and for those who ever get caught in a riptide, if you do, you have to swim sideways. It's the only way to get out. I was doing what you don't do, which is swimming up, trying to swim up. You can't get out of a riptide if you swim up. It's mm -hmm. going to make you deeper because the riptide pulls you deeper. So I was pulling up and I was being dragged down and deeper, deeper into the water and out, out into the sea, out into the ocean. And at one point I said, I need gills like a fish. Please, God, give me gills like a fish. I can't do this. I can't breathe underwater much longer. And suddenly I felt like I could breathe. I was fine. Now I was still underwater. So I obviously had crossed the threshold of needing to get above yeah. water to breathe. I was just done. And then I'm laying there. And as I'm, I'm floating under the water, I can see the sun. I can see everything got very colorful, more colorful than anything else I've ever seen. And it was so peaceful and it was so nice. I could swear I heard music. I don't know, but something that you don't hear. And I could see colorful fish. It was clear. You know, I had my eyes open. It was clear, beautiful colored fish. It could have been sharks, but they were beautiful, different colors, like a horse of many colors, but fishes, maybe uh, those yeah, seahorses, but swimming around me and fish. And that's all I remember. And it was cool. And then at one point I said, oh God, I've died. I knew I died. And I said, oh, I've died. I got you. And it was wonderful. I was like, this is wonderful. <laughs> and I'm going, this is okay. This is not bad. And I said, oh, yeah. And I probably had done it many times before because I believe in past lives from birth to death. So I'm like, yeah, and I have memories of them. So whatever Neville believes, I don't know that I'm a walk-in, but I, do, I believe from birth to death, you know, maybe with the knowledge children who are born with well that's another thing to explore children who are born with high knowledge because I was born reading at a very young age without yeah. you know so I it could be that we are like 23 mentally and just can't verbalize it until a certain time so there might be something to that now that we know more about Neville that came to me suddenly <laughs> but I'm under the water and I'm noticing that I've passed on and I said mm -hmm. oh this is okay this is okay and then I heard a voice, felt a voice, whatever you want to call it. It says, do you want to go back? And I said, no. 
I, I'm, I was thinking this whole conversation, obviously talking to myself, but the voice I would say in my head was male, maybe not. And then my own voice saying, no, I don't want to go back. And I said, no, it's very peaceful here. And then it says, do you have any regrets? And I said, yeah, I'm only 15. No, <laughs> I'm a kid. I didn't know anything beyond what I, I knew a lot, but I didn't know. I didn't have any regrets per se. Yeah. And, and then I said, oh, my mother, my mother will miss me because I'm an only child. And she was very, she's very attached to me, of course. And the minute I said that it goes, then do you want to go back? And I said, no, I don't. Uh, I'm sad for her, but not sad for her because I felt very peaceful. And the next thing you know, I'm caught in a curl again. And I was thrown back on shore at the feet of my friend. I landed on my stomach and you know, spitting out a lot of salt water <laughs> and it didn't feel very good. By the way, I felt everything. Yeah. And she said, why are you blue? I was a little blue in the face. Uh, Cause I'd been gone like 20 minutes. So I was gone. <laughs> and she says, I go, I think I died. I think I said to her, she goes, well, you didn't die. You're right here. I said, I'm blue. <laughs> well. I think I died. <laughs> and she goes, well, you're not now. So get up, let's go. It was hard to get up because I was a little wobbly on my feet, oh my you know, gosh. when she crossed over, but she, she thought, didn't <laughs> understand, did she? She didn't understand. She was 15 and she was a good Catholic girl, by the way, very, she wanted to be a nun. She was that Catholic. And I was like, oh, okay, but I think I did. And she goes, you know, I, she helped me up and I, not because people said, did you get an ambulance or, you know, jaws of life? I said, no, I think that that was handled. <laughs> I was thrown back on shore and everything was thrown out of me. I did not that I didn't have some cuts and stuff, but I came back and I did it myself or or god or whatever you want to call it at the time so that was my little near-death experience um but it was close <laughs> it was close you know yeah. I'm, i've done it other ways with illness but this one was the probably the most profound and uh a miracle sort of way as they call it but everyday miracles right we have them every day we just have to understand them better yeah yeah which is part of it yeah so oh. that was my near death <laughs> wow <laughs> So Angela, meeting, when um, uh, when you speak, when you say that you're a psychic medium, yeah, where where is spirit? Are they because when, I mean, years ago, I I worked platform yeah. as as a psychic medium, yeah, me too, and I um, I always believed at the time that spirit were all in a different realm; they were of another level. But now I've come to realize that actually, it. That there isn't another level, there isn't another realm as such, because time and space don't run linear. <laughs> no, they don't. No, it's all now. Everything is now. So Nothing is it, past, present, or future. It's all now. Yeah. That I believe for years. That I know. When it comes to readings, and I've done psychic stuff and mediumship, is that uh, that what they say is it's not really a level. It's a I would say it's an awareness, um, yeah. like the difference between ghost and spirit. Right. Yes, because I believe all that, and because I know I've seen it. But a ghost is someone whose soul is still hanging around because they don't know they died. They're unaware that they passed away, so they're still trying to live in the body that doesn't exist anymore. The body's been buried or burned or whatever, and they're hanging. And they usually ghosts are tied to where they were or something that makes them happy so mm -hmm. it's a matter of just going into the light as they say which just means you are more aware and that's what happens with spirits spirits know they've passed over and they're on the other side whatever you want to call it but it's all now nothing there's no linear time like you said really so you can talk that's why everybody can talk to them anytime ghost a little different because they might have some you know they think they're in linear time yeah. and they're not so that's just the issue with them but as for um spirits anytime they're available. That's why mediumship works. You can also talk to people who are living. I talk to them all the time because the we're all, mental really is the traveling. Because <laughs> the traveling we're all path. one. Aren't that, we're that's... all one. So there's right. no reason we can't co contact anybody. That's why we're all six degrees of separation. We're all one degree yeah. of separation, to be that's honest. Right. Because there's really, the separation is just the physical body. The, as what is the 20 column, the meat suit. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. actually, as I say to that, it's actually the literal, the yeah. literal meaning of incarnate is to become meat. Exactly. So meat, meat suit is very. Oh uh, so all it is, is the physical Karna version of your imagination. It's the physical yes. version. Yeah. Are we all butterflies dreaming we're human? Are we all humans dreaming we're butterflies? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But we could uh, all actually be dead right now. We wouldn't know. Absolutely. And 
basically that's why people say there's all because even neville talks about he thinks he has said something about different universes or levels so we might still be living enough which everything is now so it kind of makes sense our past lives are actually now we're the still parallel living universes exactly yeah, we're parallel. that's it we're I still love living. learning about that me too it's really cool that's why you sometimes have I would call it, I tell people when I work with them about but, emotions that are not yours. <laughs> yeah, but I also think, I also think now, I, it's funny because this was crossing my, my mind today that what we've thought of as parallel universes, whether you call them universes or hallways or whatever, yeah. was something I read where they were referring to them like different rooms and all that. These are states. These are really states and they may yes. be coming from different parts that we're not just not familiar with. So because we don't understand that, we yeah. will call them a parallel universe, you know, and, you got and it. I, you got it. yeah, that's it. I really that's what that's it is. What we're living. Really that's why when you get an emotion that you feel is not currently yours for whatever yes. reason, it's basically a state, but you're taking the state of one of the parallels that is going through that at this moment. Also, it, they when I've done past life regressions and readings, which I do too, uh, because we do put it linear to make us not crazy, um, is that sometimes you're living the emotion of a time or a parallel universe that's happening at that same age or same time. So if I'm in a parallel universe of somebody right now going through a wedding, you know, I'm not in a wedding, I'm not having a wedding, I might have the joy of that wedding or marrying the love of your life because my parallel universe part of me is doing that right now, which is a positive emotion. But they may be going through where their whole family got sadly massacred or whatever in that time. And then there's that emotion, uh, which you're like, am I having, am I mourning what's going on with me or am I mourning that? You go through your mourning period, you know, uh, uh, yeah. that helps to know. Uh, but even if you know, then there's ways to also heal from that state, as we say, because Neville has that. How do you go from that state? You know, when somebody does pass away out of the meat suit that we miss so much, we miss the meat suit of being able to hang out with them. And then, but they're still there. They're not gone. They really aren't. Yeah. And I but, think, I, yeah. I don't, sorry. I, I know like, um, I, I know a couple of people are very like against, against even talking about parallel universes and stuff. I don't like even saying universe because that, Yes, that gives the Denote doesn't bigger. encompass it correctly, yeah. does it? Yeah, like it but, denotes outside right. of yourself. Yeah, yeah. but to me, I mean, twenty even says there's no universe. It's all there's no universe. universe. It's always right. no universe Nothing right. outside of you. Yeah, you're but all just... like, how else can you explain to someone how everything is now? How you already have that state now that you can just step into it. That's, that's right. an important one. Well, that's what I've been. A lot of my work lately, I get a lot of people who are saying, well, I can't. And you see it on uh, the on 20 site, people who say, I can't love myself. So, you know, I need to love my and he says, you don't have to love yourself. And right. he in a way is right. But what he's sometimes I find that 20 and I'll go in there and tell them, you know, so it's cool. But uh, it's like he'll say it very simply. Well, change your state. Absolutely. Right. Now, yeah. some right. people don't know how to change that state. Number one is we are God, we are God correctly? Yeah. So we all know we're God. So yeah. what is God? And I just put this recently in my thing. God is what we're taught from day one, all churches, and this is correct, that God is unconditional love. So we are unconditional love. We are God, so we yeah. are unconditional love, which is true. The soul is unconditional love. Our bodies may have other things, but we are, that's just something we put in for what a state, a state that's not correct and that's what they're saying not even incorrect there's no really incorrect you're in a state it's a transition that, it's a transition but it's the state you think exists actually the opposite of love is never hate anyways because hate is very passionate uh indifference Here. is the, indifference is the opposite of love because it, you just yes different that's yeah. right that's right but because and i read this in some books by other authors but it's very true if God is unconditional love, this is what I argued with in the church growing up, then it doesn't throw you into hell. It doesn't punish you exactly. for sin. Exactly. There's no punishment. There's, it's unconditional. There's no wrong. There's no conditions. That's right. Means That's right. Nothing, no yes. Unconditional love is unconditional. <laughs> it's unconditional. There's no exactly. There, there's you, no finite. You can't it's sin. infinite. Yeah, it's infinite. <laughs> so un, if God is unconditional love, and I read this in a very good place, I mean, in the sense of 
who I thought was a good teacher. She may not have been the best psychic, but I thought she was okay. Sylvia Brown, right? Yes. But in, her, yes. in her books about the other side, which makes sense because I've visited the other side a few times, as they call it. It's not really the other side. It's actually, they say that spirits and the other side are about three inches above earth life, only because it's spiritual. It's three inches, not even, it's right here beside you. That's why we can all go to the others. Not that we go to the other side until we pass on, but that's where spirits live about three inches because they don't have a physical body. So it's, it's, they say it's three inches, which makes sense that they're right there beside you. So you can say, Hey, Hey dad, there's my dad. He's right here. He's three inches away. Uh, The only difference is, is that there's no physicality. There's no physicality. So he's right here. It's three inches. It's not even, it's now it's not any (laughs) different. So if you're on the other side and you're you're there, then uh, what we're saying about um, so even the parallel universes are just probably three inches. <laughs> There's just three yeah. inches yeah. here. So everything is here and it's now. Oh, the unconditional love. So if God is unconditional love, which He is, or it us, we're unconditional love. Period. Okay, it's not a guy in robes in the sky, which is my <laughs> favorite thing to say. It's not a barefoot guy in the robe. Jesus is, a, you know, as even Neville says is probably at the most is symbolic and Jesus is the symbol of your beautiful imagination as he always says. So what Sylvia Brown said, which I thought was interesting, hers was more mother and father God. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there was something about that that made sense that would relate to the Neville work. And that makes sense to me. She kind of was getting at it. If God is unconditional love, which we are, first of all, you don't need to have self-love because you are love. And if yeah, you are yeah. love, that's what I'm don't teaching. You to go you seek it. You are just love. You don't have to seek it. It's right there. You are mm. love. And anytime you are feeling love, be it for other people or yourself, and you, it, you should feel it because it's all about you. It's all about it love. It's just love. Now, if God is unconditional love and it is unconditional love, it's unmoving. It doesn't change. It doesn't have conditions. It is just love, period, end of story imagination jesus christ is the embodiment of imagination which means it's moving now sylvia brown said father god is unconditional love she agrees she was raised catholic so it's a good point and it's unconditional it doesn't move it's always love it's not changing it's just love 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 as lynn said <laughs> the you know the uh, rent produced i am rent, that does which it. i am seeking but i am that you are that you can't, you can't get self-love because you are love. You are just love. So you are that which you're seeking. And it's unmoving. You are love all the time, period, end of story. Jesus, your beautiful imagination, is the part that goes out and moves the world to do what you, you imagine. So Jesus is the moving part of the love. It doesn't change that it's love. But Jesus is more the imagination she called it mother god mother god is the movable some people in the catholic so the religions actually kind of had the idea they were almost there but they had to put something to it they call it mother mary in the catholic church mother mary is the one who uh, get your prayers you know read or done yeah. because that's the moving and christ but that's the moving part because in catholic you can only pray to mother mary to get to jesus to get out there yeah. <laughs> so they, they give a lot of things in the way but there's nothing in the way so your imagination is christ or mother mary or whatever you want to call it you don't need to call it anything but what it is it is your imagination you can call it imagination and you imagine what you want and it's the moving part of the unconditional love it's all done in unconditional love because that's what the unmoving, you are unconditional love. So you're not doing it to hurt people. And even when you get into the, the part, weird part we're not going to get into, but people who succeed at doing terrible things to other humans, uh, I'm into, I, I watch shows on that because I like to help solve crimes and stuff like that, is that they don't feel they're evil. Evil as an actor. Evil people never feel that they're evil. They feel they are doing what they are justified to do for whatever reason. Yes. So they are in a state of, I'm not evil. We call it insane and crazy, which it is and is terrible, but that's not what their, their mind is. I'm doing this because, you know, I, I, I have to do this. That's just a matter of their state is, this is something that they are felt they need to do to get where they need to go. Whether it's, we can do it through unconditional love with the Christ of ourselves, but that's, evil yeah. people or what we call evil is just a state we put them in you know yes yes so, so let's skip over and uh, move uh, yes. into the area because yeah. this has been fascinating um 
is of where you're working with a client yes. of where and where you can see what they could be manifesting, what state they, you know, because you're, you're already at the end. Yes. And they don't see it. That's why they've come to you because they don't know how to get there. And you're kind of putting it in front of them. This is something you mentioned to me when we were talking yes. about what we were discussing today. And, and then, but they, you know, they kind of stand it because they're either their, their mind hasn't opened to that point to receive that information and be it. Yeah. Or they're a little afraid of it because they don't think that's what they can handle. And you have a way of guiding them to that. And I think let's, let's talk a little about, about that whole area for mm. you. Yeah, that's, that's the one. And I kind of was getting at it with a lot of this, the self-love yes. and finding a love in your life. So everybody wants to partner up because we all feel we're not whole. First of all, we're whole. We've always been whole. Uh, we're because we've broken off in the sense that we're in these meat suits. Some of us feel like we're not complete without a partner or something like that. And even then they'll get the partners and not feel complete as we know, you know, there's <laughs> so many divorces and they got to find their perfect mate and all this stuff or they're nothing and i see that a lot even on uh you know 20 site people saying i need my lover i need this particular lover or i'm not myself or he makes me feel this and as he's kind of said and i said there's you know how many billion people on earth right now in their meat suits you can meet somebody just like that person or better <laughs> you know it's not a problem with that the personality that shows out so when it comes to knowing what you want some of my clients come to me saying that you know, I just need a lover and I'll be fine. And we all know, or I need money, which, you know, that's one I'm working on for myself because I feel a state and why am I still in that state of lack? You know, that's something that's been my, uh, whatever it is, is causing it. So I'm getting better at that, <laughs> but um, I call those bugaboos, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I call them those little, little things, you know, and um and then I'm going, I don't deserve this. I know better. And I, you know, I'm all this. So I'm all abundance. I'm all love, but it, you know, it's the meat suit. So it's yeah. what, it, and we're all on a, a road to whatever we are on. We're choosing to do. We chose to come here, by the way. I tell that to everybody. We did choose to come here. There is no accidents. Uh, it is, you are, I say, first thing I'll tell my clients who are looking for what they want, as you were saying, is that be proud of who you are because you are the bravest souls because you did choose to come into this meat suit. And that's, you know, it has emotions involved. So that's makes you very brave. You are so brave. not all souls choose to come here. No, I don't, I don't believe they do. Cause the other side has told me that some of them never come here because it's kind of brilliant when you're in the God level, you're just you, you know, I mean, you don't have the meat suit in the way nothing separating you the meat suit separates you us live in imagination <laughs> you live in imagination all the time that's why they say the and even that's where the churches get it somewhat right the other side is everything you want and more because right. you are living in imagination and so they're kind of getting there they just kind of don't tell how that's, to get there the mark who's yeah, actually spinning <laughs> exactly and they kind of they sometimes have it they're close but then they have to interpret it whatever way their priest or their original person created and that's where we come so as to creating when i get a client i have some of them have a hard time articulating what they want like i know i and you see this on 20 site too i don't know what i want well you know what you don't want right so if you know what you don't want you know what you want you want the opposite yeah. of what you don't want now let's say you <laughs> want love you want long-term love which is probably the easiest the most common too is you want a love of your life so instead of specific person i found a way for them to work on that is what do you want from that love what is it what do you think they're going to give you that you don't already have other than a physical body to, you know, have sex with or whatever you want to do with them, you know, or hang out with you. Okay. Hey, so that's you want... not a bad thing to want. <laughs> no, it's not. No, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's very pleasurable. The human body mm -hmm. does have, you know, the meat suit has some pleasures in it. So <laughs> what it is, is that you want generally most people, I say just majority wise is want somebody who's there forever, the best friend forever, the lover forever. You don't want somebody who's going to kind of come and go and leave or beat you up or whatever the case may be. So what you want is long term. So you want to go to the end, really, instead of the and even 20 has talked about this. Do you really want to just go to the wedding? If you just want a wedding, that's probably pretty easy to arrange in a way. But if you want a long term love, you got to go to the end. So I've worked with people who I've worked with them on their wedding or getting married or engaged. That is something, but those are definitely middles. 
of what you really That's right. want. Right. So what I'm finding when I'm listening, I can tell that they really just want the long term. So you, the weddings and all that stuff, it's going to happen if it's going to, it's going to happen, you know, if you're in the end, the end is you want somebody who's there till the, you know, till the end, till the end. So I said, there's a way to imagine just what you want and keep on that. And one of them was with my friend who I thought was a really great one. And she said something amazing after it. I said, imagine this was a client, but a friend too. Uh, I make friends with a lot of my clients. Imagine it, you're 85, okay? Give or take, get an age that you feel that you can live to, <laughs> you know? And if you don't, that's, that's a whole different thing. But let's say 85 and you're 85 years old and there's two rockers sitting on the porch. And it's a very easy one. And you're sitting in one of the rockers and you look over and you see the hand of your partner male or female because it doesn't matter and their hand is also aged like yours or whatever you feel if you want a younger person that's fine but you know see the see the hand of your 85 and see the hand of your 50 year old lover <laughs> uh, but see that hand reach, reach that's over wow. and grasp your hand this is your image this is imagining to a point as we talk about i yeah. did take by the way uh three or four of 20s classes sometimes retook them but uh i like the imagining to a point because it's perfect because you don't have to put a face to it so you put the oh, that hand reaching over and grabbing yours and you hear the voice in the style you want i have loved you from the day i met you and you're 85 so i have loved you from the day i met you that's forever and then my, uh, when I did that with my friend, she goes, that's a nice memory. Now, yeah. she's only 40, but what a nice memory. It's a memory. Rem yeah. Yeah. And that uh, is very powerful. Gave me very the powerful. Yes. That's most powerful. <laughs> uh, and so I, I learned from doing that with my clients, having them imagine things as a memory, because you're also doing that, even if they're not into Neville, I'm doing that with them when I go to that part of the reading. Now, I get different kinds of people, some readings say, I just want to know the future. Well, you can change that future. Right. I can, I can see things happening, but that can change. Yeah. Uh, I can see where you are and I see the road you're on. <laughs> That's how I explain it. I see what you're imagining currently. Even if you don't tell me, I can generally pick that up because, again, it's all vibration and I all feel it. You know, it's all part of the same mindset. So from deduction i can say this is what they're imagining and i can also see what they really want even if they don't know because it's pretty obvious i think i think it's obvious some people don't but they'll say i don't know what i want i want this i want this but generally most of us just want to feel content or happy or successful in some way or with our lives going where we want them because we've been taught or we think that they're not going to be what we want and we give up dreams it's being, because we're taught they're too hard. They're just they're out of hard. your reach. Yeah, they're out of your reach. But why are they? They're just not. I, you know, I was taught that young and I'm an actor and Broadway is my dream and it closed for a year. So I had no hope there. But I have friends that I grew up with. I did theater with in Arizona who ended up on Broadway. So it's really not that hard. It, it, I mean, not that it's not hard, but it's not hard to manifest it because it can be done. It is done. It's done sure. by people I worked with for years. So it's a matter of, yeah, what do I want? But what then I go into, which I've done with the Neville stuff, is why do I want Broadway? What, is, what does that represent to me? What is the feeling that I can have right now? I don't have to be on Broadway to have that feeling. Mm. So where am I getting it? And I seem to be led into this teaching. <laughs> this is my Broadway at this point. And I could still end up in a Broadway show because that's what I want. And that's the other thing with clients is that they say, I want this. You know, I want that particular person. I want that particular thing. Well, but what is the, what's the state you really want? Can, is that state going to come from that? You only think it's going to come from that, which it may. But that, right. and I think 20 has pushed that too. What is the state you really want? It's really about the state. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you feel this, and even this was once said on Abraham Hicks, but I think it was correct. And it was, it was right. It kind of was a 20 thing. But when I was still doing Abraham Hicks, one girl was talking to Esther, you know, doing her Abraham thing. For those who don't know, Esther channels a higher being called Abraham. And people, she does these things in person where you ask a question and this Abraham character answers. Kind of her walk-in. I guess that's a walk-in for her. <laughs> so Abraham speaks 
on behalf, but some of the stuff he said, I listened to a lot of those lectures too before, uh, are very right on kind yeah. of Neville level. They just kind of, re they say it in other terms. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like Neville better at this point, you know, and I, and I'm into that. But one of them was a girl asking about her lover. And the Abraham character was saying, you have to imagine he's there you feel him, you feel what he is. Uh, they talk about vibes, vibrations Vibe, or matching mm -hmm. the thing. You don't have to match the vibration of him, but uh, the, where Neville would agree or where Neville actually said first is that you have to know they're already there. You're already at the end. Going to the end is basically what I guess Abraham would call matching vibrations. So you go to the end, you feel it. So what is the feeling you want from having a partner? Yes, you want a lover. You want somebody who's going to make love to you. And by the way, I've dated every single actor I liked in my dreams. I have dreamt them all and I've had relationships <laughs> with all of them. It works very well when you start doing it yourself. I have had a marriage and even uh, actors who have passed on. I have dreams that before they passed on, I was with them. And that's, that's an interesting thing that's been happening to me for the past, I guess, year since I've gotten more into the Neville. So let me tell you guys, if you have a, a crush from even the past, because there are levels or not levels, but whatever you want to call them, because it's all now, you can you can be married to Alan Rickman. I was married to him and made love with him in my dreams. It's beautiful, by the way. And I wake up having had a whole relationship with Alan Rickman, who passed away about three or four years ago. So this person is like you're imagining, but what is it you want from the lover? And so Abraham said, I'll go back to point, said, this one girl who was asking the question to Abraham said, so I have to believe he's there so much that I don't even need him to be there. Yeah. There you go. Neville, <laughs> you have to believe it so strongly that they don't even have to be there. They're already yes. there. And that's exactly, that was Neville and one, one little thing from Abraham. So Abraham got it <laughs> or Esther, whoever Esther channeled Abraham. It was perfect. And ever since then, I go, that's it. That's the secret. That That's not a secret. Never was a secret. But, you know, and that's also in the Bible. And being a Sunday school teacher at one point, <laughs> I tell people that, too, who think they're sinning just having a reading with me. I get that once in a while. Um, yeah. Is that the Bible says pray as if I it already say. is. I don't remember exact verse or date, but I. I that is pure that's, Neville. That's yeah. pure Neville. Pray as Praying if it already is. is. is that's right. Praying is, is receiving. It's yep. receiving. This is the way Neville teaches praying. It's not pleading, bargaining, nope. begging, nope. requesting. Let's take just no. for you. No. And you don't have, exactly. It's not that. And I used to teach that before I heard of Neville, but it pray, the power of prayer, which is absolutely true. It's really not about putting your hands together or looking towards the East or whatever it is you want to do. That's just ritual people put in there. Ritual can be fun. I like some ritual, but it's not necessary. Uh, it's like people who say you have to do a vision board, eh, you know, <laughs> throw away your scissors and get out your yarn. It takes forever. You're just making it harder and longer. You're making the road harder. But it's the power of prayer in the Bible says basically, and I, I use this as an example for years, uh, is that if you have a sick child and you keep looking at that child is sick and you see that child laying there ailing, you're not praying. You're, you're actually making the child sicker. Not that you're making them, but you're not helping. You're not lovingly imagining. But if you imagine that very child that lays there sick running and all this and playing and being the healthy person, that mm -hmm. is praying for their health. That's how you pray as if it already is and saying, thank you, God, or whatever they did and when I taught power of prayer. Thank you, God, for my healthy child. Not thank you, God, for making my sick child well. Quit, take the sick out, put the well in because it's not about that. Um, and that's, I don't know if you want to get into this, but one of my things is also about imagining people staying alive that, uh, and not letting them transition. I'm working, I work with people near death, at death, and people who have lost someone. And they said, I prayed that they lived, or I, even some who are saying on, uh, with the 2020 work and, oh, well, the Neville work, is that I'm praying for my grandmother to survive. She has this, she's like this. My mother is actually at her, somewhere around her transition. She hasn't decided when to go, but she, my mother has stage four metastatic breast cancer. Mm. And, uh, you know, I could imagine she's cured, but she's been through it three times. And she also has dementia very severely. I can imagine she's cured. I could. And she has, um, she's also legally blind, which she has been for a long time. So she doesn't know who people are when I call her. 
Okay. I am, I am in the mourning period of losing my mother. Cause I lost her when this dementia happened. Cause it's not the same woman I knew. Yeah. I, I don't, not that I disagree, but I don't agree fully myself when these people who say my grandmother's in a coma and all this or dementia, I, I'm wishing her well. And then she died anyways. Well, what did I do wrong? This is when we get into what's right and wrong about Neville. I don't think Neville ever said stop somebody from transitioning because he talks about transition. And I feel that if somebody has, dis- and it's their decision. Yes, that's right. Whether they tra- and my mother will, tra- my mother was given six months to live in 2020 of February. She's still here. So she hasn't decided to transition right. yet. And I say, you know what? I've told her, on, and I talked to her, of course, and uh, I talked to her in person. She doesn't, sometimes she doesn't even know she has the phone to her ear, but uh, I talk to her obviously telepathically all the time in dreams too. And I tell her that, you know, you, when you're ready, that's your choice and I'm not going to stop you. I want you just, I just want her not to be in pain, which yes. we've taken care of. We, she gets morphine twice a day all the things you need to do, but I'm not imagining her as anything, but I do imagine her happy, but not necessarily on this side. And I'm not going to imagine her hugging her and doing what I used to do with her other than memory, because she has chosen as she needs to transition at some point and she will. Uh, she's chosen the way she's going to do that. And obviously that's towards her dis-ease, as I call them, dis-ease. Dis-ease. Yep. Yeah. I, w- I wish she had chosen an easier way, but she, that's, I can't make that choice for her. She made a choice of how it would happen. I, I find it interesting she chose dementia because she all the pain in her life that she had is no longer there because she doesn't remember. And I would say, I, I realized about all patients of dementia and Alzheimer's, it's an interesting dis-ease that they choose. I was just because, going to say. Can I say also? I often I some- think that they that, that it's not a disease no. because, I think it's actually them as a walk in or walk out because it's as if they're yeah. they're walking the limbo, <laughs> and so they've they've got their toes dipped in either side. <laughs> and yeah, they have their toes dipped in the three inches. I, yes, they do. I, yeah. I think I think it's actually a misspelling to say dementia. I think it's dementia. I like it. As, <gasps> as soon as they they when when you speak to so many people with dementia. They yeah. are in direct contact with spirit all they the are. time. Oh, they, talk they talk about, about their them. loved ones that have passed. Yeah. They talk about what they yeah. can see in My the room right now. That's more real to them than, than <laughs> yeah. we are. Yeah, so let me right. tell you, They can't remember talks... what's going on here, but no, they know but... exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> and my mother says amazing things. She tells me, first of all, early on before she went into this full part of dementia, which I like, she told me about these blue people who came to visit her, blue people. And she said they were very nice, very nice people. They were blue. They came to visit her and talk to her. I said, you know, and I told her I believe her. There's no reason not to because she saw the blue people. She also sees a lot of children <laughs> who are not children we know. Or she knows. She goes, well, there are children here. And I go, okay. And do you know their names? No, but they're playing and I'm talking to the children. And I go, okay, that's fine. She like, and she's happy. So I like the dimension because she's not in, she's, as long as she's not in pain, I'm cool with that. Cause she, you know, she's aware of that, but she's aware of other people. She knows, basically she has a daughter. She doesn't know necessarily my name all the time, but if they tell her, this is your daughter. Oh, okay. <laughs> so she's happy to know. <laughs> and sometimes like you said they know people from she talks about some of her sisters and stuff but that's all she knows their name a little bit from the past but i like the diamond is perfect because they have chosen whatever happened on this meat suit life is no longer relevant to them Mm -hmm. and they're ready to you know they're like you said both worlds they're three inches above and they're they're here so they are definitely more telepathic than we are (laughs) they might give you something but um I said, yeah, I don't feel that, and I don't think he he promotes that, but the people on there are trying to promote, I want to cure my grand, grandmother or my mother, but it's, I'm not sure that that should be for, you know, for any of us uh, to promote that, and I do that with my clients who have dying relatives, that if it's their time to go, and I can, you know, usually you can feel that, and I can see that, because I can see other people's, uh, you know, what they're imagining currently, and I can go into that because I can visit the the other side and the dimensions is that I know that somewhere they chose because there are things that they're just ready or tr- they've done all they can do. And no matter what age you die, and this I've believed for many years, is that 
it's never the wrong time because somewhere you chose. You chose, your soul is choosing the transition time. And even Neville talks about that. Your soul, because he left pretty early. He was not an old man when he left. No, he wasn't. Was he in his was late 60s? Or yes, that's, that's pretty young. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm 57. Yeah. I don't expect yeah. to leave in 10 years or, yeah, he was like 67. I'm going, I don't expect to, but I might change my mind at some point. I don't know. But um, prepared is that I don't feel that that's very old. I have, you know, my mother's 89. She did hit her 89th birthday. She remembered, like, I called her on the day before her birthday. And I said, you know, your birthday is soon. She goes, and she remembered the date, which was funny, December 23rd. I go, right, tomorrow. She goes, Oh, okay. She doesn't remember dates, but she remembers the date of her birthday. But it's, I, I feel that that should not be encouraged to, I don't know. Neville does seem to think that when you are transitioning, would somebody imagine Neville staying alive longer than 67, like his wife and his daughter? Probably, but he wasn't going to. That was just his choice, whatever age he was. Uh, and I think he was 67, but it's like, that's also another part of this is, on the Neville work, it doesn't talk about you saving people's lives. Like look, people get imagining lovingly for others a little misconstrued when they do that. Like yeah. thinking they can, they can take a special someone away from their wife. Right. Now, yes. It's, it's yeah. like if you want a special someone and they're married or they got engaged or they're married to somebody else, I want to say to them, stop that because they have made a choice and they're happy. And you're trying to say, oh, I only want them to be happy with me. Well, that's not how it works. You're you're bastardizing. I call it bastardizing the the gift. It's and they're they're trying to do that. A lot of them are taking it, thinking it's a magic trick, a spell to convert somebody to your way of thinking. And that's not the way you do it. That's not what Neville said. He didn't say go center. They go, but he was married. And as I we explained, <laughs> he was married by paper. You know, some that's people right. are married by mm -hmm. paper. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean you're married. Yeah. To, you know, and like, if you want to go back to medieval days, they said, how did they get married? They just said, I marry you. And said, I marry you. And that's it. <laughs> <Easy enough. laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm under like a that. tree outside, <laughs> under a tree outside and it made good. And they didn't need no priest or anybody to make it permanent or the justice of the peace. It was just something they chose to do. They just betrayed each other, didn't they? They did. So what's wrong with that? I think that's one of the best ways. I mean, other than we have some legal stuff nowadays, we made into law that you get you can split things and stuff like if you want to and then there's the divorce thing <laughs> and so it's like human stuff meat suit stuff is really in the end you know we we get there but the state is unconditional love period end of story unconditional love and what you really want is i encourage my clients as i do because i can see what they really want i can also say but let's look at it this way what do you want do you want to be married to this particular person or do you want the feeling of being loved and taken care of? If they chose somebody else or they're married to somebody else, then they've made a choice. And so you can be happy with somebody else. You really can. You may not think it for a moment. We've all been through our love affairs or whatever, but it's like I can be married to Alan Rickman and he's dead and he had a wife but I can do that in my imagination and I don't have to you know, compromise anything i wouldn't take away his wife or anything else and i wouldn't want to i can enjoy the moment for the moment what it is in, in coast in my dreams in person i can find somebody who's wonderful as if i need to and want to and i'm wonderful so i'm already there <laughs> so it's not just that there's a lot of people that decide or say that they're manifesting um true love for example yeah and and they're assuming that it's with the, the person they're with or the person yes. that they want and actually what tends to happen is that all of that just foot breaks apart and falls to pieces and they're wondering what the hell's going on yes. well hang on that's not what I've manifested actually it is because yes. that's obviously not right for you and so it's got to go in order for you to to get your end in absolutely well it's like I want to manifest, you know, somebody who's my best friend and loves me, but let's say you're in, involved, not necessarily married with a person who abuses you. And that's, and then they say they want to change that. They want to imagine them better. That's all fine. But, you know, imagining somebody who's violent better is you don't need to do it with them. You know, yeah, you can get out. Yeah. You don't have to live in the house. This. Get out. <laughs> that's human life. Your humanness, if you want to keep it, if you want to keep the meat soup for a while longer, you might want to move yeah, away. Yeah, you from might somebody get the fuck out of there. 
he may, yeah. change, he may get into Move. therapy and be perfect for you, but not now. No. Nope. That's not what you're imagining. You're imagining. Well, yeah. So- <laughs> yeah, Neville would Neville would say, you know, a, a somebody he knew, and and she'd insist yeah. on having to be a certain person, yeah. and then he'd get invited to the wedding, and then they sort of they knew they weren't <laughs> really getting the, they were okay, happy, but not what they might have had if they it, had assumed that they were the loved wife and went that right. route, and they'd kind of not really be able to look them in the eye. You know, like, I got something on you, lady. You know? yeah. Well, I was, I said that too about Neville. I said he could have, if he really was, you know, <laughs> saying that that's the right way to be a certain person, he could have got back with his wife. But he didn't imagine that. He didn't want it. That's he right. knew she wasn't the right person. There was, That's right. was just, just a given. Know. Yeah. He just knows. And he left. And that they broke up the long before they divorced. That was just a matter of paper. It had nothing to do with. So Neville can, is a good example of that. He waited for the love of his life. He, and if you listen to all the lectures, he dated somebody, almost became engaged with her. She wanted to get married. And, and he said when no. he, she said it to him and he said no. He goes, you know what? I don't feel we're, we're going to be well married together. The act she was a broadway actress and he goes it's just not going to work and so he you know he let her go he let her free because he understood that was right to do because he wasn't going to do what she wanted her desire was to be married his was not not with her so he let her go and that's also a right thing these people who are in relationships and i do this with my clients if you're in a relationship that's not working because well he won't do this how do i make him do this i said you don't you either love them unconditionally you know there's some conditions in love relationships, yes, like you want them to, uh, you know, be with you. But if they're not, well, then how much is that a love? Con- you know, their unconditional love for you is not unconditional. And yours isn't either. Love, they can have conditions because you want, like, if you want a partner, you want somebody who's going to sleep with you. You know, I had a parents in marriage who they never slept together except enough to get me. But, <laughs> and they were unhappy. Hi, kitty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's the baby. Uh, they were not happy. And I was nine years old and told them to get divorced. I said, you should both be happy. You shouldn't be unhappy. And I said, I'm nine years old. And I recognize that. I said, I love both my parents. I said, mom, I can live with you and visit dad, but you should both be happy. Mm. And she said, she, she felt my mother's state was that she felt she could not survive without a man. She just didn't. And she lived with my father till he died. And then within a few years after that, she married another guy. Uh, and, and she used to ask me why I was still single for many years, because she said, I can't imagine that she can't imagine that because she felt that she needed a man to survive from whatever world she was raised in. And she felt as a depression baby that you need somebody to help take care of you. Yeah. I'm going through this with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah from that age frame yes too. they are from that <laughs> and that's what they believe and that's the state they're in my mother was a very dynamic and smart and strong woman she could have done it she joined the army before she got married and traveled the world and i'm going of course you could survive by yourself my god you're probably she was much more dominant than most of the men she married <laughs> so she married three uh and she killed them all i used to joke with her i go mom you killed all your husbands and she goes well honey, I didn't kill them. They just died, <laughs> which is true, which is true. But I love to tease her because she was funny that way. She's funny that way. So um, just to sum up, because we've been going for quite a while now, Angela, what are you going to be doing in the Neville Goddard Summit? Well, basically kind of what we talked about a little bit of imagining what you really want mm-hmm. and uh, for success because you imagine what you want you just keep your eye on the hand the the hand of your lover right on your hand at 85 years old and getting to the end of what you really want i think that that's important and also uh imagining as it is as you want it instead of doing the special person which you can do but i would suggest and teach them that we want to work on what we really want success so you want to be if you want to be on broadway and i've said this in some of my stuff if you want to be on broadway hold that tony award because the end of it is you want the tony award so let's hold that tony award in our hand feel that tony award as they talk about you know feel up the tony award which is kind well, of <laughs> and also you know in the in the isn't it wonderful technique it takes you even beyond that to where yes. You know, people say, oh, you've done so many films and you've won so many awards and, and you're I've, looking, it's, it's gone even further along. I've done that too. And I said, and life. imagine, imagine the line of Tony Awards in your bathroom when you're 85. Yeah. They're right there, you know, wherever you want to put them. I've mm. also 
uh, there was something that Neville did. He imagined, I, 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 or no, Twindy does it. Imagine how he's going to die or when he's going to die or his death experience. I've imagined my death, okay? And it's, it's very interesting because it is about my loving show business. I am uh, 110 years old, I think, about 100, uh, between 110 and 113. Because I was told by three psychics I lived to be 110. And I go, that long? But if I'm going to live that yeah, long. That's a long time. <laughs> it is a very long time. Oh, I am made it to 106. So Yeah, <laughs> if I'm going to live that long, I have decided that my last day, I'm going to be somewhere around 110. And I've actually done a role on Broadway. Like one of my mini roles is probably my last role. It is closing night of the show. So it's not like I've missed a performance. And I've taken the curtain call. You know, we have the curtain call. The show is ending. I go back to my dressing room. I'm looking at all the the pictures of my my career in Broadway and all the beautiful <laughs> things that happened in film. And my, you know, my Tony sitting there maybe because I brought him to the dressing room. And I look at them and then I see the love of my life who will obviously be crossed over by then. He's still alive now. It's my favorite actor who I've actually met. And he reaches for me with his hand from the other side. And I go, is it time? And he goes, it's time, my love. And I go with him and that's it. And I'm in my dressing room and I guess whoever finds me, finds me sitting there smiling as I crossed over. <laughs> that's, oh, the end of, that's my last Cut day. And, and I finished the show and the show did go on because I finished the show. I went to curtain call. <laughs> well, Beautiful. that's lovely. Angela, thank you for coming to visit us today. If people would like to contact you, do you have a website you can tell the viewers? I have my websites right now are on Facebook, but uh, I will be getting a website soon. But on Facebook, you can get me at Angel Aura 28. If you put in that's a page, a web page, Angel Aura, A-N-G-E-L-A-U-R-A 28 for the psychic readings. And then I do have a, a Neville one, which is Visions with Neville Goddard. Visions Neville Goddard, which is the, uh, you know, yeah, you can make your own name for the page. Uh, and then for email, this is the easiest way to reach me if you're having trouble remembering all this or right now, if it's not posted, I could have, it's angelara28 at yahoo.com. And you can put what it is if you'd like a reading. We'll or a put coaching. the links all in the description. Great. Yeah. Angelara28 at uh, yahoo.com. And that's Great. the best way to reach Great. me for readings and coaching and all this stuff that we're doing. <laughs> and what date are you on the summit? The 4th, 5th or 6th? <laughs> good question is it a friday 20's saturday, doing sunday. the friday um and then there's a saturday, saturday or sunday I think saturday i think yeah, on saturday, saturday i have to double check on that i'm sorry i didn't look it up at the moment but i i think i am on saturday pretty sure so great. everybody at home go to the nevels goddard summit.com and you will be able to see angela's face on there and you'll be able to click and you can get your yeah. tickets now and it's going to be fun it's interactive you get to imagine with me and with yourself exactly <laughs> and imagine lovingly for everybody else <laughs> there so you go. Be thank you it's thank been you. awesome thank you angela it's been thank great you. fun thank you great having you on and you guys can find us everywhere just search two comma coffee club tiktok instagram youtube and facebook see you next time guys mm -hmm.